Hi, I'm Brenda Quintana coming to you from the Beehive at QBeesQuest.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make this fall leaves card using the colorful season stamp set. This card is created by stamping the bold leaf and then spritzing it all over with water to create this watercolor effect. I'm going to show you my tips and tricks for creating this perfectly blended background. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make it. To start off with, you're going to need a piece of thick, very vanilla cardstock, and I've cut this piece to five and a half inches by four and a quarter inches. I'm also going to need a scrap piece of computer paper to protect my work surface. I'm going to be using four colors of ink, Crushed Curry, Tangerine Tango, Lemon Lime Twist, and Garden Green. We're going to be using the bold leaf from the Colorful Season stamp set and we're going to start off with the lightest color of ink which is the Crushed Curry. And I'm going to kind of randomly stamp the leaf over top this cardstock. You want to stamp it about five times. Then you want to clean off your stamp and I'm going to use my stamp and scrub and this is the side right here where you spray some stamp and mist on and I'm going to clean it and then I'm going to dry it. Then I'm going to work with the next color which is Tangerine Tango and I'm going to stamp the leaf in between and around these crush curry leaves and again I'm going to stamp about five leaves and I want to make sure that I'm filling in the white spaces as much as possible. Then I'm going to go ahead and clean off my stamp again and now I'm going to work with a lemon lime twist and I'm just going ahead and filling up the spaces. I was stamping it again about five times and then I'm going to clean my stamp again and then I'm going to use Garden Green for my last stamping and I'm trying to fill in some of these last spaces. Not every space needs to be completely covered but you want to get significant coverage so here's what my stamp surface looks like. Next you're going to need a paper plate or a styrofoam plate to spritz your piece of cardstock on. So I've got it right here and the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to spritz the back side of this paper and the reason we're going to do that is if we only spritz the front side of this paper it's going to expand and stretch and it's going to warp the paper so we want to spray it on both sides so both sides get equally wet and stretched. That way the two wet surfaces will cancel each other out and the cardstock will still lay flat. So let's start off by turning this around and you're going to need your stamp and spritzer and this is just filled with water and I'm going to point my nozzle to the back of this paper and I'm just going to spray it all over the back. Then I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to make sure that the back of it is completely wet all the way around. When that is the case, then I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to start spritzing on the front. want to make sure I get good coverage and then I'm going to start swirling the water around and you notice it's going to start running and you're going to notice after a while that there's going to be probably some white spots where the water hasn't hit. So that's when I come in and I take my aqua painter and let me just make sure that my aqua painter is running some water. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and make sure any of those places that are white just get hit with a little bit of water. I'm just squeezing the water on there because I want to make sure that the water runs all over this piece. I don't want any white spots. See there's one right here. 
just going to hit that. Oh, and I see this leaf right here hasn't gotten hit. So I just want to make sure the surface is completely wet. And I'm going to let this run over, kind of swirling it around. And there might be a couple other spots that haven't had water on them. So let me just make sure they've got water. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna let the water run off to the sides of the plate because I wanna make sure that the water just doesn't sit on there. So keep it to the sides as much as possible. Then you can bring in a scrap piece of paper that you used to stamp on it first and just lift up this piece and set it on here and then set it aside to dry for about an hour. So this is definitely a project that you're going to want to give yourself enough time to let your pieces dry. When I'm doing these cards, I like to stamp several pieces and then I go back in an hour and I finish off the card. You can continue to use the same plate. I just dry it off with a tissue and then keep using it. So once your piece of cardstock has dried, it's gonna look something like this. And I cut my piece of cardstock down a little bit just to give it a little bit of a nicer edge. So I cut this piece down to five and one eighths inches by three and seven eighths inches. Then you're going to need a card base and I've cut a piece of cardstock to eight and a half inches by five and a half inches and then I scored it in half at the four and a quarter inch mark. Then I folded it in half and you can use your bone folder to smooth down that fold. Then you're going to take your piece and some Tombow multi-purpose glue and you're going to put some Tombow on the back of your watercolor washed piece and then you can add it to the front of the card as a layer and just center it like that. Then I'd like to take some jute twine to tie around this piece, but I find that the jute twine is a little bit too thick and I kind of like to separate the strands. So I cut myself a piece of jute twine that is 16 inches long and I'm going to unravel it. So I start by taking the end and untwisting the end until I've got some of these pieces that are starting to separate out. It's going to separate into three bigger strands. So you just kind of go along and start unraveling these strands. And you're going to unravel them into three pieces. So here's the first piece. And then these two will unravel into another two strands. So then you're going to take two of these strands and you're going to line them up and you're going to tie them around your card. I want the knot to be over on the right hand side and then I'm just going to take it and make the first knot and to tie this a lot easier, I'm going to take my locking tweezers and I'm going to lock my first knot and then I'm going to I'm going to come in and tie the second knot like that, remove my locking tweezers. Then you've got your two strands of jute twine. You can separate them just a little bit and then you're going to want to trim off the ends of your twine a little bit. And then you're also going to want to separate them a little bit so it gives it kind of that fringed look. And if some of these little strands come loose, that's fine. Just remove them and take them off there like that. So now we just need to stamp a greeting for the front of the card. And I'm going to create a fun little label using the Everyday Label Punch. And I need it to be a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of cardstock that is four and a quarter inches by two and a quarter inches. And I'm going to open up my punch and I'm going to feed this piece of cardstock through the top of my punch and through the center of the punch. And then I'm going to 
pull it up when it gets to the center, right through the middle, and then I'm going to keep pulling it until it reaches the edge of my punch right here. And then I'm going to make sure it's aligned properly, and then I'm going to give it a little punch. And then it takes off about that much. Then let's go ahead and stamp this piece so I know how long to make the other end. So I've got my Early Espresso ink pad here, and I've got this beautiful greeting that says, May all your tomorrows be as happy as today. And I'm just going to ink this up, and I'm going to center it on the side here. The edge of my stamp is going to hit the edge of this punched end right here. I'm going to stamp that down. Then I'm just going to feed this through the punch again. So come in from the top and then have it come through. And you're just going to look and see how far you want it. You're going to want to make sure that your words are centered. So I'm looking at this end and seeing how far I uh, stamped away from this end. And I'm going to want the same distance on the other side. And when that looks, I'm going to punch it through. Then I'm going to need just one more punch piece. I'm going to take a piece of Early Espresso cardstock. And I'm just going to punch it normally this time. Then I'm going to take this piece and I'm just going to cut it in half with my scissors. And I'm going to attach it on the ends like this. So I'll put a little bit of Tombow on this end and just adhere it on the end of my greeting. And then I'm going to do the same for the other side. like that. Then I just need to add some dimensionals to here and add this to the front of the card. So I'm going to use these little foam dimensionals and I'm going to add probably four. And that way it will go right over top of thy jute twine. And just remove the backings. And then just center this on the front of your card like that. And there you go. Isn't that card just beautiful? The background almost looks like some fancy designer series paper. All the supplies you'll need to make this beautiful fall card are available for purchase on my blog. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Bye for now. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out all the free with purchase tutorials available on my blog. The Hershey's Wine, Champagne and Margarita Glass tutorial is just one of the exclusive tutorials that you can choose free with a minimum purchase in my Stampin' Up! store. Hi, it's Brenda again. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also visit my blog for more information on my projects and to learn about my rewards program. or just watch another one of my videos. Thanks for watching.